film by Pia Scove entitled Bad Mana, an eye-opening on-the-spot report on Christian missionary conversions in India, sheds light on the dangerous forced conversions destroying innocent Hindu communities across India. Largely filmed in the Songhad and Dang areas of southern Gujarat, the film documents the experiences of real villagers duped into accepting money and false promises in exchange for turning their backs on their Hindu families. One man tells the reason he converted is because the church gave him 4,000 rupees for his farming. He says he was told he would be trained to become a priest but was only trained to convert people to Christianity and was told negative things about Hinduism. They were told Hindu mantras bring out the devil in people. Another man says we have been taught since childhood that Hindus are evil people, possessed by devils and demons. We were not allowed to enter their homes or eat their food in case the evil entered into us. I used to be very afraid of the Hindus. The filmmaker shares her sentiment of the missionary militants as a type of mafia extorting money and using violence against villagers to further their own ends. A young girl raised in a missionary school shared, we were not allowed to learn the traditional Indian language and were stopped from singing the national anthem. I believe that the Christians are here in India because they want to destroy the whole Hindu culture and religion. A doctor from Ashram Hospital in Dang said he sees many patients come to him after they have been sick for a very long time. They avoid going to the hospital immediately after falling ill because they are told the church will heal them. Only after this fails they finally go to the hospitals. The film goes on to say it is of common knowledge that the churches buy conversions at $12 a head. Many of the benefits are provided only in the beginning to lure the villagers to convert. After conversion, people pictures of our Hindu gods. Poor people choose to become Christians because the church promises them advantages, things that would take the Indian government a long time to deliver. 
and they promised them healing from all diseases just by coming to the Sunday prayers in the church. A couple shares of their conversion experience. We got converted to Christianity because our son was very sick. We were promised that he would be healed in the church. After seven years, our son was still very sick, so we decided to reconvert back to Hinduism. Now our son is not sick anymore. We were told we could eat meat from cows and pigs, but we never started to do that. Since we became Hindus again, we are not welcomed by Christian people. Another man tells, In my district, 97% of the population is Christian now. Many times I have attended big Christian church gatherings with 15 to 20,000 people. They only use people who are instructed to act sick and then pretend to be healed. They created anti-Hindu and anti-national feelings and they are changing the Hindu culture. The film segment ends, I saw people with a rich cultural history dating back more than 5,000 years being destroyed. A 2009 film by Pia Skov entitled Bad Mana, an eye-opening on-the-spot report on Christian missionary conversions in India, sheds light on the dangerous forced conversions destroying innocent Hindu communities across India. Largely filmed in the Songhad and Dang areas of southern Gujarat, the film documents the experiences of real villagers duped into accepting money and false promises in exchange for turning their backs on their Hindu families. One man tells the reason he converted is because the church gave him 4,000 rupees for his farming. He says he was told he would be trained to become a priest but was only trained to convert people to Christianity and was told negative things about Hinduism. They were told Hindu mantras bring out the devil in people. Another man says, We have been taught since childhood that Hindus are evil people, possessed by devils and demons. We were not allowed to enter their homes or eat their food in case the evil entered into us. I used to be very afraid of the Hindus. The filmmaker shares her sentiment of the missionary militants as a type of mafia extorting money and using violence against villagers to further their own ends. A young girl raised in a missionary school shared, We were not allowed to learn the traditional Indian language and were stopped from singing the national anthem. I believe that the Christians are here in India because they want to destroy the whole Hindu culture and religion. A doctor from Ashram Hospital in Dang said he sees many patients come to him after they have been sick for a very long time. They avoid going to the hospital immediately after falling ill because they are told the church will heal them. Only after this fails they finally go to the hospitals. The film goes on to say it is of common knowledge that the churches buy conversions at $12 a head. Many of the benefits are provided only in the beginning to lure the villagers to convert. After conversion, people are told to keep away from Hindus, even away from the family members who have not yet been converted. The missionaries made the converts believe that even talking to a Hindu makes him or her possessed by devils. This all begs the question, how do the missionary militants know so much about devil worship? Another man shares three priests in long white robes were ordering these people to step on pictures of different Hindu gods which they had placed on the steps of the church. They were also ordered to burn pictures of our Hindu gods. Poor people choose to become Christians because the church promises them advantages, things that would take the Indian government a long time to deliver. And they promised them healing from all diseases just by coming to the Sunday prayers in the church. A couple shares of their conversion experience. We got converted to Christianity because our son was very sick. We were promised that he would be healed in the church. After seven years, our son was still very sick, so we decided to reconvert back to Hinduism. Now our son is not sick anymore. We were told we could eat meat from cows and pigs, but we never started to do that. Since we became Hindus again, we are not welcomed by Christian people. Another man tells, In my district, 97% of the population is Christian now. 
Many times I have attended big Christian church gatherings with 15 to 20,000 people. They only use people who are instructed to act sick and then pretend to be healed. They created anti-Hindu and anti-national feelings and they are changing the Hindu culture. The film segment ends, I saw people with a rich cultural history dating back more than 5,000 years being destroyed. Nitya, shall I start? Anamurtim, Zanvati, Tam Gagana Sadusham, Tatvamasya, Dilaksham, Yekam Nityam, Bimalamachalam, Sarvadi, Sakshibutam, Pavati, Tam Triguna Rahitam, Sadgurum, Tam Namami. Nityanandam. We offer our humble obeisance, our humble pranam at the Divine Lotus Feet of the Supreme Pontiff of Hinduism. His Divine Lord, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Nityananda Paramashivam. And we welcome all the viewers across the world. For those of you tuning in for the first time, to Kailasha's Nityananda TV. Welcome to the official TV channel for Sri Kailasha, the only and the greatest Hindu nation in the world. Sri Kailasha is a Hindu nation revived by His Divine Holiness, Bhagavan Nityananda Paramashivam, which serves millions with a simple and powerful way to experience and live enlightenment. It's at this time that we gather for the most awaited part of our day, Nityananda Satsang. For millions of us across the world, this is at the time that we are preparing ourselves for the darshan of Paramashiva. No matter if we are getting ready, for the day ahead of us, or we are wrapping up our day, it is at this time an alarm goes off in all of us. A sweet alarm, which is telling us to align back to our ultimate purpose in our life. Paramashiva has come down to planet Earth and manifested this grand Leela of his life. For each and every one of us to be a part, Swamiji has taken this physical form and come down from Kailasha itself. Now that Swamiji is here 
we can celebrate his happening on planet and spread the message of Sri Kailasha. We invite all the viewers to share this link with all on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and all other social media platforms. As we continue in the satsang introduction and we get prepared for Swamiji satsang, let's do whatever we can to reach this message to one and all. The WHO, World Health Organization, Director General, announced recently that the novel coronavirus pandemic is still accelerating and its effects will be felt for decades. The pandemic is still accelerating. Tedros Adhanom told the Virtual Health Forum, organized by WHO, in Dubai, in the United Arab Emirates. We know that the pandemic is much more than a health crisis. It is an economic crisis, a social crisis, and in many countries, a political crisis. Its effects will be felt for decades to come. According to the data collected by world meters, odometers, We can see the accelerating rates of coronavirus. Globally, we are almost at 10 million cases of coronavirus. We can see some of the data right now. The Supreme Pontiff of Hinduism, Swamiji, is leading the world into the post-coronavirus civilization. With the Paramashivoham program, over 5,000 people are transforming their lives with a super conscious breakthrough. For those of you who don't know what Paramashivoham, let's watch a short video now. Whatever you think as your strength, like how much cash you have, how much gold you have, how much money you have in the bank, what all properties you have, your secret passwords, passcodes, your strength secrets, you will tell only to your son or your daughter to whom you are going to give your inheritance. Same way, most important powerful secrets Paramashiva has given to his son Muruga, Subramanya, in Agama called Sarvanyanotragama. All the powerful secrets the father will tell only to his son. It is too secret. I am going to open that Agama and give all the essence of all those secrets. Secrets of Staryapada lifestyle, secrets of Kriyapada, secrets of Yoga Pada, and secrets of Jnana Pada. I am not only going to teach you I am going to give you exactly what Paramashiva gave it to Subramanya because Paramashiva himself is manifesting to this being now giving you all exactly what was given to Subramanya. Nothing is required from your side. Just sit like innocent Subramanya. Muruga at the feet of Paramashiva. I assure you whatever was given to Subramanya, the whole life will be given to you now. Not just words, teachings, not even just experience. Life itself. I am talking to each one of you sitting in your room. I will make you all Subramanya. For millions of us across the world, we are undergoing the same global crisis. Whatever we, whatever we may be, but Swamiji empowers us so much. We feel simply 
impervious to the negativity every day we find new found inspiration for life because of the powerful cognitions which swami ji reveals to us and the initiations he gives spirituality empowering us to transcend our limitations this is the way that even during the most severe global recession pandemic that we are seeing in centuries sri kailasha is continuing to evolve grow and continuing to contribute to people's lives the global akanda nirvikalpa samadhi gnana yagna was in the 42nd day to give the world a super conscious breakthrough and healed the world from covid-19 people from over 50 countries continuously radiated the space of paramashiva by practicing the unclutching meditation 24 hours a day 7 days a week starting from the 13th of may india time Yesterday 731 people sessions from 13 zones from around the world and 50 countries collectively meditated for 43860 minutes per piece just over the last 6 months we have collectively meditated and contributed to the collective consciousness more than 3 million minutes per piece and minutes to heal covid-19 every zone started with chanting the mahavakya for 1 hour then upanishads and bhagavad gita for 1 hour and then and then did 12 hours straight of unclutching meditation at any given time there were 4 to 8 zones actively unclutching around the world and you yourself can join this movement in order to contribute to the world at kailasa.tv/minutesforpeace one of the aspects of paramashivoham is upanishad the upanishads are part of the vedanta or the last part of the vedas the oldest scriptures of hinduism created between 1500 to 1000 bce the upanishads contained re- and revealed truth or shruti about brahman whom is god the ultimate reality and the way of enlightenment or moksha the term upanishad actually means and is derived from upa which means nearby ni at the proper place or down and shat means to sit and it means sitting near a teacher to receive the sacred teachings for swami ji an incarnation of parma shiva the great truths of upanishad were already there within his bio memory from before his birth in 1978 dr jim b tucker in his book past lives writes evidence of past life memories may exist in our everyday lives child prodigies for example may acquire certain skills and talents to such high degrees in past life and those skills become deeply embedded in our consciousness our attitudes beliefs obsessions and compulsions stem from past lives even love at first sight has an association with the past life phenomenon and of course Swami ji himself has spoken so much on past life in Swami ji's own life he exhibited extraordinary knowledge of vedas puranas upanishad and all before even the age of 10 without any kind of formal study then later of course when we asked we found out that swami ji's own biological mother whom we call swami amma when he was when she was carrying him she listened to the ancient scriptures again and again by the age of 3 swami ji started reciting the whole ancient scriptures by heart every day of the year he would spend at least a few hours if not the whole day with his gurus slowly he began learning the alphabet 
the letters of the Tamil alphabet, and he learned to read and write. His primary education was purely Vedic, one without one ounce of corruption from the invasive school structure of the outside. Swamiji says, I can literally just repeat the whole book when he talks about the Upanishad. Fortunately, even the language taught to Swamiji was only by his gurus. Swamiji says he does not go to school even that regularly. The book titled Atma Puranam was gifted to Swamiji by Isaki Swamigal. And this was the first book ever possessed by the avatar, the first Hindu scriptural book of Vedanta possessed by Swamiji. Isaki Swamigal and Mata Vibhudanda Puri would sit for long hours with Swamiji exploring the truths of the Vedanta through reading of this book. This book contains three major Upanishadic texts, that is the Isha Upanishad, Kena Upanishad, and Kata Upanishad. Mata Vibhudananda Puri would read these verses and explain its truths, while Isakki Swamigal would give his own commentary as well. This book is still today preserved in the biographical uh, archives of the National Archives of Sri Kailasa. During the early years of the revival of Sri Kailasa and Swamiji's whole mission, he began teaching Upanishad first as a samyama. As a way of sitting in deep listening with the Guru, Swamiji first explained and experienced this Upanishad Samyama from his own Guru, Mataji Bhubudananda Puri. Once, Mataji Bhubudananda Puri asked Swamiji to go and buy the Upanishad book from the market. Swamiji went and searched everywhere, but he was not able to get it. Swamiji came back with a very sad feeling and told her, Ma, the Upanishad book is not there. I don't know what to do. She said, don't bother. What is the meaning of Upanishad? She asked. And Swamiji responded, Upanishad means sitting with the master. She said, just sit. And Swamiji simply sat next to her. Swamiji then explained the next events. He said, funny thing is, after I sat, she just put her hand on my hand and I saw the Upanishad book there. Very powerfully, very casually, she materialized the book. Understand, if you have this power of piousness, the whole will inside disappears usually. In her, Swamiji says, in Mataji Vibhudanapuri, Swamiji has seen that piousness, the simplicity and the power expressing. He says, that is the beauty. See, if she is constantly carrying the ego that she has the power, she would even send me to the buy the book. She will say, Arise it, I'll materialize and start the class. No, she would have done that. She didn't do that. It means that she doesn't carry that ego inside of her. She doesn't use that ego fulfillment only when it's really necessary and it is needed. She expresses the kind of powers. A great pious person is how Swamiji remembers her. In her life, she had expressed all of these powers just from this pure and innocent space. Today, Swamiji teaches the very same method that Vivdananda Puri and given him the Upanishad Samyama, the way to imbibe from the Guru even what cannot be communicated through words. In the same way that a baby grows in the womb of its mother when she is sleeping, the soul of an initiated disciple grows when he is seated alone within the self. Upanishad means nothing but sitting with the master. No prayer, 
no meditation no mantra is needed all one has to do is sit although the fear of falling into depression may arise there is no need to worry after all how long can worries haunt the individual when they are directly confronted the mind is a powerful thing it will bring up unnecessary excuses like work not having time to sit with oneself however it helps to look closer and see what every person has as much time as they can for themselves to find time to sacrifice an hour from watching television or surfing the net neither of which adds any value to one's time when excuses have lost power over the individuals fears will take over fear of failure and fear of depression will attack one's resolve and attempt to break it but the key is to face the fears the person will scared that they will asleep or that they will never be able to complete the samyama if not they will be afraid of falling into depression the key to overcome the constant stream of worry in the mind is to confront those worries when human beings accept that they are truly alone orphans in this world they can face their worries a strong resolve to just sit will fight away all deviances of the mind like how swami ji sat with mata vidyananda puri at that age today thousands of disciples have sat with their guru swami ji and imbibe the greatest truths just within that silence just to witness how swami ji will sit in upanishad let us see a brief one is capsule when swami ji is sitting with all his adinavasis in the sacred banyan tree in adikailash
Today, we will be exploring another fundamental aspect of the grand happening of the avatar, sannyas. One day, the avatar's words and his phys physical presence will be remembered and celebrated through books and through all the videography and all of the photographs throughout his lifetime. Though he will be recalled as the most recorded incarnation in history, which with millions of books and videos, his life will be his greatest teaching. The avatar has delivered and continues to deliver what he came to planet Earth for, not just because he said it, but because he lived it. Sanyas is the lifestyle which the avatar lived with such perfect integrity and authenticity. Throughout the Hindu history, it is this lifestyle and the people who lived it, who protected and saved Hinduism from disappearing from planet Earth. In the modern day, the avatar, Swamiji, paved this unique pathway for millions of disciples to follow and ultimately reach the superior experience, the oneness with Paramashiva himself. In times such as this, when Kali Yuga is at its peak atrocity, this new pathway is a challenge, but it is still needed for humanity to attain the next level of consciousness and conscious functioning. Sanyas is the bridge that the avatar is rebuilding that will help millions cross over from depression into the light on the other side. First, let us understand what is the very definition of sannyas. When Swamiji begins to define sannyas, he starts with the definition of integrity. He says, integrity is one unit of oneness, the state of Paramashivatva manifesting in your body and mind. Integrity is the unit to measure the amount of oneness which is oozing out through your body and mind. Sanyas is the unit to measure the amount that state, space, and powers of Paramashivatva are manifesting in your body and mind. An integrated person may have the state but may not have the space and powers of Paramashivatva. They were many who had relaxed into the state of Paramashivatva and said, enough, I am full, why unnecessarily bother with anything else? It is very few who decide to also manifest the space and powers of Paramashivatva just to show us the possibility. Integrity is the first of 36 tattvas or units to measure the existence of the cosmos. And sannyas is the last unit to measure the most supreme experience of the universe, the ability to be in the pure state, the ability, the ability to manifest the pure state, and the ability to manifest powers from the pure state of Paramashivatva. Swamiji says, I'm not going to say that sannyas is the only way, but I'm going to say that it is the royal way. The right practice of our original state of Paramashivatra is sannyas. That means without diluting the state, making it into a space and manifesting it into powers. For our understanding, Swamiji gives us a beautiful analogy. During a certain period, when milk is becoming curd, nobody should touch it. It should not be moved. It should only be left alone. In the same way, Anybody who wants to manifest Paramashivatva needs to be left untouched for a certain period. Your body and mind need to be left untouched without even remembering anyone or anyone else in your inner space. If your life is committed to somebody in your life has another reflection or another responsibility, you need to respond to them. You have some fundamental commitment to somebody, but when physically, mentally, psychologically, and emotionally, there is no other relationship other than your guru. You don't need to respond to anyone else. You only need to respond to the guru's presence in your life. When milk is the right saturation, you just need to drop a few drops of curd into it and leave it, which means the drop is initiation. 
You just have to have that initiation and leave it. Then the milk solidifies and assumes the form of the pot and does not respond or relate with anything other than the pot. In the same way, when the initiation is dropped, you need to be left to be one with the Guru and let him mold you. You see, when there is a commitment to continuously respond to another person, your, your nervous system goes under a certain kind of regular anxiety attack. It's like being a cloth being beaten every day. When a cloth is being beaten every day, you can't expect it to be strengthened. That is why during the period when integrity is becoming enriching inside of us, you need to be left physically and mentally untouched and undemanded That's and good. not required to respond to anything other than the Guru Vak, the guidance of the Guru. You need to be left in that kind of Vatavara. Anybody who reaches the shore of Paramashivatva, even if they were Grahastas, understand that the reality is that they need to be literally living as sannyasis at least for a certain period of time. The space of sannyas where you physically live, brahmacharya, or living with the fulfillment within oneself without the need of the opposite gender, ahimsa, nonviolence, satya, thinking and speaking the truth always, asteya, non stealing, aparigraha, living with minimum things. All of these things are all required for Paramashivata. From the beginning of Swamiji's advent on planet Earth, he was always a sannyasi. In fact, after he birth, his birth, when Swamiji's biological mother took him to the astrologer, the astrologer said that he would become a Raja sannyasi or a king of monks. Now, we can actually witness an amount of this horoscope from that very astrologer's son. வண்டி <laughs> This man is the son of the astrologer who had given the original astrology, the original horoscope for Swamiji. He says, Raj Mudiriyar, who lives in our street, owns a rice grain shop. His house is five houses away from ours. He is the maternal grandfather of Swamiji. And his name is P. Raju Mudiriyar. For his entire family, we would, we would cast the horoscope. We are familiar with him because we are in the same street. In my, if my father casts the horoscope, whatever he really reveals will become true. When he was born, Swamiji's mother had come to, to my father to cast his horoscope. I know that. I was a child then and did not know much further. She came and got the horoscope done. His grandfather, Raju Mundiriyar, 
used to go to the temple. At that time, Swamiji used to hold his hand and go to the temple. He would keep the sacred ash on his forehead and go and come back with his grandfather. He was very kind towards us. He got the dream related spirituality from his grandfather. My father was share, has shared with me at one point in the time after his course, his casting his horoscope. That his horoscope was the nature that he would become a sannyasi, a raja rishi, the king amongst monks. He had told his parents, don't re reveal this to him. If you tell him, he will become a sannyasi soon. Else his life will get, else his sannyas life will get delayed. It is your wish how you want to handle this. <laughs> Just like he predicted what happened. My father passed. My father passed away at the time he Swamiji grew and emerged. He passed away in 2003. And after that, I am continuing this profession. This is a sacred chant that he is paying obeisance to Anna Malayar before proceeding with the rest of the interview. Adiyar mail. Una Tirle Nikum, Adavum, Unme Purvolum, Yana Terolo, Yenaman Kaladi, Yidium, Yerevinkan, Anai, Tiralvande, Anayun Jaral, Anna Malayare, Truna Malayla, Pornda Kurdika, Ubokuto Jiko. That one has to be very fortunate to be born in Tirvanamale. No Sulanga Yenga Yenatale, for Swamiji to incarnate in our community, the Shaiva Velala community. It is the benefit of our past spiritual credit and past good actions. Nanga Purumi Padataka Vakele, Yango Kodaway, Swami Avadara Manar, Nanga Senja Purum Punio, Lalvene Payan and a correct Yempe on the Ramali. My name is Ramalingam. I was born in this place in nineteen forty five. Nan on the Pondo in the Urlada, Ayer to Dolayer to Narpati Angi, Idivik and Gadarka. I don't like to go anywhere from this place and I have not gone anywhere also. Swamiji's original name is Raja Shekaran and I know him since childhood. After he became Nityananda, our association increased. Initially, there was not much of an association with Swamiji, but I used to be watching all that he would do since childhood. When we used to go Swami the presiding deity of Tiruvannamalai, during the Kartika Deepam festival, whatever divine vehicle the deity came on, Swamiji would make that vehicle in clay and show us. At that time, I did not know he had such so much of attachment to the divine. Only then we saw he went to great heights. But once, when he was completing his studies, one Tanjavur Swami came to my mill. At that time, Swamiji's elder, either elder or younger cousin brother, his father's older brother's son, Ganeshan, brought Swamiji's horoscope and came. He see my horoscope. 
his own horoscope avan jadagatha paathi swami sonna purpade idu after kanjara swami saw his horoscope and told he said this is my father's younger brother's son horoscope please see this and tell chitapa painoda jadagam idha paathu sollunga swami nare தஞ்சாவூர் சுவாமி அந்த ஜாதக நோட்ல கை வச்சிட்டு அதை திறக்கவே இல்லை ஆண்டு ஜாதகம் பார்க்க கூடாது எனக்கு மனசு ஒரு மாதிரியா இருந்தது என்ன சுவாமி அந்த தம்பி அங்க நிக்கிறேன் He said how does it matter where he is standing he is a great seer he is going to go around the world one should not look into this don't show this to anyone take it and keep it inside and this is a first incident the ulagam pola pola aale idu paakudadi engey kaatadi da eduthu vai da appdin solittaaru idha modhal nigal The avatar is seen here at age 4 dressed as a sanyasi hindu monk cognizing his sanyas in his very depth at that young age behind him is the sacred arunachala parma shiva himself in the hill form in tiruvannamalai the avatar's place of incarnation Swami ji narrates that once at the age of around 6 Raghupati yogi once asked him do you want to become a sanyasi or grihastha Swami ji just stood up and profoundly declared sanyasi Swami ji says still i remember i just stood up because i didn't want him even for one moment to take the decision of grihastha a householder for me i stood up and said sanyasi with the force and power raghupati yogi touched swami ji's head and did something then after two or three days swami ji asked him did you purify my brain to give a sanyas life he said i just increased the frequency to seeking that's all he said just the seeking becomes powerful all good would become your bio memory this is the one thing that swami ji continues to speak on the intense seeking when taking sanyas we take five oaths which we talked about earlier the asteya aparigraha satya brahmacharya and ahimsa swami ji says that anyone struggling with brahmacharya or aparigraha or asteya any woes any woe you are struggling with just your seeking is not intense or you are struggling with integrity or inauthenticity irresponsibility selfishness whatever it is just boiled down to only one not having enough seeking just increase the intensity of seeking amazingly swami continues from the time that he put his hand on my head my entire sexual development stopped my physiology froze my sexual physiology did not develop further the power of this declaration by the young avatar just stopped the sexual maturity from happening in his body to date the testosterone the male hormone levels in the avatar's body match the levels that are normally found in a 6 year old boy in 2014 when an invasive medical test was conducted on swami ji at the victoria government hospital the test results showed that 
the testosterone levels of Swamiji were that of a six-year-old boy. As you can see, this is the exact records of Swamiji's medical tests showing Swamiji's levels of testosterone in his body. To many, this might be extremely shocking results, but for all of us devotees, this is an indicator of the sheer power of Swamiji's command over his body to manifest sannyas even though even through his physiological function. The last bliss, the ultimate bliss, the final bliss you experience is that space of being a disciple. Enjoy it now itself. Do not miss it. You may lose it after enlightenment. When Swamiji says, I tell you, you will really, really miss the guru-disciple relationship. Even after enlightenment, it is a joy to be sitting, just melting, listening to some words and missing some words. Heart melting, eyes pouring, muscle melting like an ice cream, the throat choking, hair standing on the end, body losing its feeling of being possessed by ego, just sitting simply and listening the listening with the readiness to listen. It is not a joke. Among billions of people on the planet Earth, blessed are those who have the readiness to listen in their heart. Swamiji says, I am not even saying that you should listen to me. Not at all. I am not even saying, be my disciple. I am just saying, being a disciple, being a receiver is a joy. Even if you are the disciple of an ordinary stone or a tree, it is okay. The joy of receptivity, receiving, when it is experienced in your bio-memory, the body loses the feeling of being possessed all the time. We feel our body is being possessed by ego. When our ego possesses our body, our whole body will be stressed, heavy. But when we really sit and melt, the very idea of being possessed by ego disappears, dissolves. During the period 1986 to 1987, a number of other enlightened beings, mystics and siddhas were blessed to play their unique roles in the young avatars leela of disciplehood. Both teaching and learning from their incredible student, mentoring and guiding him with loving reverence, thus being immortalized in the Paramashiva's own eternally living Purana the boundless epic of his incarnations. He was a blessed to all whose path he met. Is even before what he calls his enlightenment experience at the age of 12. All of them were very clear that he was the avatar and even though he was a child, he was a divine entity, a guru. They were grateful to be in his presence as long as they could. The beautiful Leela that Paramashiva played with these special beings was the same Guru disciple Leela. But they were the ones who played the Guru, like Paramashiva himself learned from his first disciple. His consort Devi and son Subramanya, the avatar learned from these blessed beings. Among Swamiji's gurus was Bhagwan Ramana Maharshi, one of the most well-known gurus of the 21st century. Even though Ramana Maharshi left the body years before the advent of the avatar, 
he was still a strong influence in swamiji's life swamiji says when i remember him and his life i can never stop my overflowing emotions and devotion i can say you may love any number of people in your life you may marry any time in your any times in your life you may do whatever you want but your first love the boy or a girl who caught your heart or attention in your childhood stays in your heart forever even after that person changes his form or quality in the same way my first love is ramar maharshi before going forward in our exploration of swamiji's life let's watch a short video about swamiji's reverence and devotion for ramana maharshi just yesterday i was reading some of the reminiscences about ramana maharshi what a disciplined life he lived oh god being a bhagwan lord himself landing on the human frame what a disciplined life even is walking every day that was his exercise so much of discipline at least one hour morning one hour evening he will not miss walking in the uphill very little food then coming back again is darshan then going for a walk evening darshan the chanting and gracing and resting everything was so disciplined so regular whoever comes even if the king or queen those days even kings and queens used to come and have his darshan he will not miss his walk even if the king or queen comes they have to sit and wait and he will not miss his time with his monkeys and pet animals even if the vips come they have to sit and wait he will tell them no this is the time for animals every day he used to spend at least an hour or two he had lot of pets monkeys peacocks snakes cheetah rabbit all sorts of animals i can understand those days arunachala would have been so rich when i remember him and his life i can never stop my overflowing emotions and devotion i can say you may love any number of people in your life you may marry any time in your life you may do whatever you want but your first love the boy or girl who caught your heart or attention in your childhood stays in your heart forever even after that person changes his form or quality same way my first love is ramana maharshi how many masters would have entered my life how many people would have impressed me how many people would have given me experiences enlightenment spirituality different experiences but bhagwan still remains 
as my first love even after you grow your priorities change your preferences change your taste changes but even then when you search for your life partner you will see the imprint of your first love continues to remain and influences your search same way ramana marshi is my first love and any number of masters i may connect with worship relate have experience darshan read but he remains he continues to remain in me influencing inspiring any master i see the qualities i search in them is the qualities of ramana maharshi only with that scale i measure or judge understand whether he is a master or not if i just live like him and die i'll feel i'm fulfilled what a discipline what a life till now i manifested revealed the signs of state of parama shiva space of parama shiva powers of parama shiva now direct process directly from parama shiva to manifest the being of parama shiva because the world is ready akash bhairava is a god who makes all our beings ready for parama shiva to manifest it will be centered on akash bhairava and making parama shiva manifest in all of us the program will be guru dakshina base it will be dependent on you you can't put any monetary value for it if 10000 of us can sit together and manifest the being of parama shiva not only we will heal the corona virus in the whole world we will give a super conscious breakthrough to the world whatever i was talking after the great pass i'm going to make that all into reality this will be the most life positive happening on planet earth all of you make the decision to attend parama shivoham from simple integrity my purpose is to make you attend sincerely that's all parallels between ramana maharshi and swami ji is their true compassion and love for all beings not just humans swami ji says that because of the enlightenment the incarnations radiate beings in all different spaces and dimensions are attracted to them there was an incident ramana maharshi had a pet dog every day it will come when he eats he will give one handful of food in his leaf in his leaf itself and the dog will eat and go one day one devotee or the dog's devotee was so angry he said how dare you put your mouth in bhagwan's leaf and eat the food it is disrespect the dog was so depressed and fellow just went and jumped into the well and committed suicide died when bhagwan was told this information his eyes became watery and he called that this disciple and said you don't know what you did he was a siddha purusha was living around me for my presence then he said do not touch a single tree do not touch a single animal living around in this area they are all here for my satsanga he says 
the yoga prasthas yoga prastha means people almost about to get enlightened but body was lost due to some reason they may come down as this kind of animals and plants live in the presence of master and get liberated in a very short span without wasting the time of taking the human body taking the human birth because when you take human birth human mind comes with human mind always possibility of taking diversion exists even after associating with the master for a long time till the ultimate enlightenment happens there is always a danger of dropping taking diversion going back to u-turn throughout swamiji's life all kinds of beings were attracted to live in the presence of swamiji and become enlightened in fact when swamiji was young he had a pet dog of his own name named mani swamiji recalls my grandmother brought brought her a pet to the house this guy used to be very nice to me i played with him whenever i found time and slowly our friendship grew because whenever i was doing puja he would sit next to me and not allow anybody else to come and disturb me now we can we can see a photograph of swamiji's grandmother with mani just as ramana maharshi attracted so many different lives to live around him since the beginning of swamiji's life many animals were earning to live around swamiji let us watch a few brief video where swamiji describes the beautiful guru disciple relationship in every level whether it is accepting donations or accepting human beings accepting land i am absolutely clear kailasa will be aligned to the cosmic principles i want all the kailasas all over the world rededicate yourself once more to the cosmic principles realign yourself once more to the cosmic principles because i am very clear i am not interested in this hit and run relationship i am interested in stable committed not just long term long lives after lives relationship not just long term one life long term life after life relationship there's a beautiful verse in on tamil song how many births i may take i want a boon from you that i should be your son a son is praying to his mother that how many janmas i may take i should be your son give me that boon there's one more beautiful verse by a saint he says peravami vendum perandalum unai maravami vendum i don't want birth even if i take birth i should never forget you to paramashiva so our relationship should be like that i'll feel i am a successful guru when a disciple as i should be liberated and i should be in kailasa with you if i have to take birth i should come only by remembering you to live your words and live your command guru walk if a disciple as only this as a prayer then i will feel 
that I am a successful guru for him. That is what is the not just long term one life relationship, long term life after life relationship, all life relationship. Guru disciple relationship is all time relationship. It is not, it is neither hit and, relation, hit and run relationship nor long term one life relationship. No. It is life after life relationship. I am responsible for making you experience the culture of the cosmos, the cosmic principles. I might have lost the land, but I am grounded in cosmos and only as long as we have life on planet earth, we are living on planet earth, humanity will survive, understand? The people who are living the cosmic principles without compromising are the juice of planet earth, essence of planet earth, sweetness of planet earth, spice of planet earth. As long as they are alive, they are led to live, planet earth will be alive, humanity will be alive. Swamiji, what is the role of uh, gurus in our lives and in Sanatana Dharma? What is the role of the guru? Just Why can't all of us become gurus? <laughs> <laughs> Except we won't have followers. <laughs> no, I tell you, ah. making yourself as a follower for you is the first job of guru. <laughs> making yourself? Making yourself as your follower ah. is the first job of guru. Only who made himself as his follower can be a guru to make others follow him. Because nobody is a fool. Everybody goes to the depth and analyzes guru. Actually they analyze guru hundred times more than they can analyze themselves. <laughs> no, I tell people. Because See, there are only hundreds of people <laughs> seeing the guru. Right? Nobody See, is seeing them. Only when they analyze them, they use uh -huh. two eyes or lesser. When they analyze Guru, they use thousand eyes. Yes, the thousand eyes. And basically, I am telling you, Guru is the most scrutinized person. First, if you do not have a blind spot, you can be Guru of you. And if you are able to help others to find their blind spot, you can be Guru of them. Oh. Basically, the job of the Guru is nothing but helping every individual to manifest their ultimate reality. And a Guru is needed. I should say, without Guru also you can manifest, which takes few thousand births and deaths. <laughs> See, without, can you say, without GPS, can I reach America? You can. It takes a long time. Sometimes you may not even. May not even. May not even make it. So GPS, Guru Positioning System. <laughs> Makes journey easy, joyful and certain. A certain kind of a certainty. Because, see, when you see somebody swimming, Beyond logic, you are convinced you can swim. When he can swim, why not me? Then you start taking the steps for it. So surely, GPS helps. <laughs> Makes it easy. <laughs>
so much about finding your guru it is like if i have to put it in a language which you all understand love at first sight don't even try to make me as a guru or remember and all that just leave it you will not be able to forget me if i am your guru you will not be able to forget me if i am your guru it is like a click happens something will click in you you just will not be able to forget i am there all the time inside whether you are cooking or you are in the in your office meeting whatever you are doing i am there all the time as undercurrent in you then i am your guru if that does not happen don't worry continue your search you will find my blessings so you don't have to worry think too much about how do i find my guru you go on become more and more authentic you will see simply you will the guru will find you and the click will happen understand this is the underline the moment you wake up whether you are brushing the teeth or taking bath or cooking going to office attending your routine or reading books or watching tv or watching movie whatever you may do i'll be there as an undercurrent sitting inside you you don't have to think plan nothing it will just click it will just click so in your language you call it falling in love i say raising in love it will just happen from swami ji's own life is sri ramakrishna paramahamsa who was alive from 1836 to 1886 ramakrishna paramahamsa was an extremely influential incarnation of the modern day who has truly led the world in the field of spirituality swami ji says for 10 years i read the gospel of ramakrishna every night I never felt bored with his spiritual truths. It is not that always when I read Ramakrishna's gospel I was feeling pleasant and happy to read further. Many times I felt I was not executing the words that he was saying. I have to execute those words. There were millions of struggles. Sometimes I would not even feel like reading the next page. But I would still think let me complete this one truth let me master this one truth and then let me go to the next swami ji continues to say he has experienced all kinds of mood swings all kinds of thinking all kinds of discontentment all kinds of dissatisfaction and all kinds of guilt i was seeing everything of course in a different scale i was seeing everything in a scale which is the scale in which swami ji sees of course is different and the scale which we all see is also different swami ji explains a beautiful story from the life of ramakrishna paramahamsa let us now understand that from swami ji himself in india the habit of putting the conch bangles bangles made out of conch shell they will cut the conch shell and make bangles they will put the bangles on devi murti means the hands of the goddess goddess statue this devi has got this goddess has got four hands in one hand she is holding the head of a demon means that is the ego cut when you cut the ego you become enlightened to 
show that she is having the head of a demon in the hand just to show that remove your ego symbolically in all other three hands you can put the conch bangle in this hand it won't enter because the uh, statue is made in such a way that she is holding that head you can't put the conch bangle one day a lady devotee brought four bangles for Devi and gave it to Ramakrishna and told please put it on Devi he put all the three and the ladies, he was trying to put the fourth one also. That lady who brought the bangle, she laughed and told, Are you mad? You are trying to put the bangle on her hand. Bangle is small and the hand is big because she is, he is, holding, she is holding the head. But Ramakrishna said, No, that is okay. The story says, Ramakrishna came out of the shrine and when the lady saw, the Devi was already wearing the bangle. The bangle was in the hands of Devi. The lady was frightened, shocked, surprised. And she asked, how can you do this? Did you break the bangle or did you break the statue? He said, go and check. She went and checked, the bangle is there as a single piece. It's not broken, it's not cut and pasted. No. Those days there was no fevical. <laughs> and the statue is not broken. No. Impossible. How can it happen? She asked Ramakrishna, how did it happen? What did you do? How the bangle went inside the hand? Ramakrishna said, no, just I told Devi, drop the head. She dropped it, I put the bangle, then I told her, please now hold, and she's holding now, that's all. <laughs> Understand? Please, if you go to Dakshinesa, still you can see the bangle unbroken. And the statue which is not broken, big marble head, it, the murti is made out of single piece marble. When I went there, the Swami will be allowed to go inside and touch the deity. I touched and saw. I just tried to rotate the bangle because I am not the guy who believes so easily. <laughs> no, I tell others, but I myself don't believe easily. <laughs> no, I went and did that. I just tried. Tried to roll. And I was shocked. My eyes started pouring. The same statue See the power when you open up, when you open up, not only you become alive, even to the person or the object to which you open up, he or the object also becomes alive. Understand? You can't relate. I know many people are now struggling to relate with the story which I expressed. It's very difficult telling that a uh, the statue left the head and after a few minutes it started after a few minutes it started holding you can't it's very difficult to understand logical people will think oh what is he talking how can this be they will naturally ask for photograph videograph scientific research and they will have their own theory. Maybe the Ramakrishna was hallucinating. <laughs> he needs psychotherapy. <laughs> ah, there must be a small cut in that bangle. You can have stories. But very difficult. Unless you yourself experience how to justify. Actually, when I entered inside the shrine to check, I never thought... I'll be completely broken. I'll be completely shaken. Because I thought, must be somewhere one corner there should be a small break. <laughs> and they would have pasted it with some traditional gum. Because in those days, Fevical may not be there, but there must, be, there must have been some gum. 
I was trying to move, move, move that bangle at least ten times. That pujari was standing and laughing at me. Pujari means the person who does puja, the Panditji, is, um, this belongs to the same family of Ramakrishna. He was standing there and laughing at me. That he knows the story and he understands that I am checking. I am just checking. No logic. But still the proof is there. Still proof is there. If you go, you can see. And impossible to put that bangle. And he says, Ramakrishna says, what is there? I told her to drop that head and put the bangle and gave that head and he again she started holding. That's all. Such a simple, straight way of relating. He says, sometime he will eat the food and see the taste and then offer it. Not only that, he will take a small thread and keep it near her nose to see whether she is really breathing or not. And he says, she used to breathe. Anyhow, at least all these things we don't have evidence. But this bangle, we can't tell anything. It's there. When I heard the story myself, I thought, let me go and see and then we will talk about it. Forget it. But when I went there, when the pujaris allowed me near the murti, even at that time I never thought I will be completely shaken. Because sometime when you see something beyond logic, when you see the compassion of the divine, just your whole being moves away. Just your whole being is taken away. Just your whole logic gives way. Yogi, Rams, Yogi Ramasura Kumar, also called Visiri Swamigal, would always smoke the village BD, but around him, but you would never be suffocated by the smell of it. He was born in Varanasi on December 18, 1918, and from a young age, was always attracted to the dense spiritual life that existed in the sacred city. Like the avatar, he also spent his childhood with many sadhus and yearned for this lifestyle. In 1959, Yogi Ramasurat Kumar finally settled in Tiruvannamalai, the birthplace of the avatar as well as thousands of enlightened beings before and after him, the avatar enjoyed the presence of Yogi Ramasurat Kumar from very young age. Visiri Swamigal had many well-known spots where he would be found sitting. One of them was on the steps of a building adjacent to Termuti, where the temple chariot was parked. He would be comfortably sitting there amidst a pile of garbage. Usually, people who passed by Visri Swamigal would stop and ask him questions about their future. Many children on their way to school would stop and ask, Swami, will I pass my exam today? Or, will I get a good report today? But they rarely got a response from him. On the way to school one day, Swamiji also stopped and asked if he would pass the test in school that day. Swamiji got the reply, he would pass the test of life, my boy. You will pass the test of life, my boy. An old lady who always sat by Yogi Ramasurat Kumar overheard these words and told Swamiji, Go, go, you will never understand these words now, but you will remember them later. The, those days, Yogi Ramasurat Kumar would always sit in the burial ground and meditate. He would be sitting on a large double tomb 
and swamiji used to hide and watch him and enjoy the mysticism that he radiated he would shoo me away saying it's only me go away every day after walking around arunachala hill swamiji would go to the burial ground and sit at his feet to have his darshan he used to wear a garland of ropes swamiji says fortunately i had such a love for him i would just catch hold of his ropes that is the way i used to talk to him now a photo is being projected of swami ji and yogi ram surat kumar in 1994 we can now we can now watch a video where swami ji is narrating a story about yogi ramasurat kumar blessed are those who are directly asked to do the things which are not dharma as per your understanding by guru i am telling you if your guru says do something which is not dharma as per you and you do it you are blessed you are blessed i still repent for not smoking when yogi ram surat kumar gave me the bd i still repent but i missed it i missed the chance now how many times i smoke nothing can happen that won't liberate me anyhow i struggled myself i can say if i would have picked up the bd from his hand that day and smoked i can say at least i would have reduced two years of my struggle in my journey two year struggle could have been sorted out in two second i'm very clear i still repent for not picking up the bd from ram surat kumar when he gave maybe many of you may not know that incident let me describe i am brought up from a very orthodox family my grandfather oh god is a great inspiration for me but highly orthodox tell extreme funny level of orthodoxy you can't even talk about non veg or uh, alcohol or cigarette bd in the house forget about you can't even talk forget about having you can't even talk even in the tv some scenes coming if some scenes come as if smoking you will switch off the tv and i was brought up by him one day i was sitting in the tirunamalai burial ground smashana cremation ground with uh, yogi ram surat kumar usually he sits there in the night time whenever i ask him why do you sit here he says this is a calm place only dead people will not disturb us <laughs> he will be happily sitting i went and sat i used to i used to enjoy his company he is a chain smoker i don't know what happened one day suddenly he picked up the bd from his mouth and stretched to me my love for him and my parental conditioning both were having war literally it is like a krishna got down from the chariot and picked up the wheel as a sudarshana chakra to kill bhishma <laughs> krishna is guru bhishma is parental conditioning krishna picked up the sudarshana chakra come on it is time unless i get down the parental conditioning will not die he is rolling but krishna has promised he will not 
take any weapon and fight in the war. Guru always promises he will not directly kill parental condition. I can see exactly Krishna standing there instead of the chariot wheel, chariot wheel with BD. <laughs> and my Bhishma is struggling. And I neither moved my body front nor said no. Saying no too much but moving the body and picking up too much. What to do? I was just frozen. But the BD is burning. Time is running. Time is running. See, not deciding is deciding not to decide. I was not deciding, but naturally it means deciding not to decide. Then the fire went and touched Ramsarutma's finger. He just dropped the BD. When the fire came near his finger, he dropped the BD. He just caught my ears, both ears. But fortunately I had a such a deep surrender to him and he was able to force me and I am blessed he forced me but still I missed for me not taking the decision voluntarily he just caught my ears and blew the smoke from his mouth on my face I don't know what happened for three days whatever was happening around me was soundless movie in those days, the movies used to come. No sound. No volume. Just the scenes will go. Same way, soundless movie. Everything happening around me without background noise. I am seeing vehicles moving. I can see temple arti is happening but no bell sound. Everything was such peace. But even then, of course, after that, never I smoked. Not even once. But I repent for not picking up when he gave, when he stretched his hand. Gladly jump beyond dharma when master asks you, that is the best thing you will do for yourself and for your enlightenment. I can say only to ask you to do something which is not dharma as per you, master happens in your life. Putting on my trust in you Cause you know it's best for me To lead a blissful life A life with no more strife I can't believe the things I do Just spend a little time with you All of the gurus in Swamiji's life some way contributed in order to for us today to have that experience in Swamiji's life, in our own life. That very experience that happened in him is transmitted through him and his initiation to all of us. For example, Yogananda Puri had contributed, given the entire aspect of yoga, Rubhadanda Puri had given the entire aspect of the Vedanta and Tantra, but it was none other than Paramashiva himself that gave the in ultimate enlightenment and oneness experience, the ultimate relationship with the Guru, Arunangi Yogeshwara, the very embodiment of Paramashiva himself, remembered and worshipped in Tiruvan Namale as Paramashiva himself. Before going into the next part, let us remind ourselves, remember Arunangi Yogeshwara by the Dhyana Shloka for Arunangi Yogeshwara. Om Lalate Tripundri Nitila Krita Kasturi Tilakaha Puran mala dharas purita kati kaupi navasana ha dadano dustaram shirashipaniraram shashikalam 
प्रदीप सर्वे अरुणगी योगी विजयते the one who has the, the tripundri the three lines of sacred ash on his forehead the mark of the sacred musk applied on his forehead who is the wearer of the glittering garland who wears the loin cloth on his radiantly glowing waist who holds the unconquerable king cobra and crescent moon on his crown victory unto you arunagiri yogeshwara illuminator of all beings this the ar shloka is from the arunachala purana verse 1 the arunagiri yogeshwara vandanam the welcoming of arunagiri yogeshwara in this salutation we offer our respects and our gratitude to arunagiri yogeshwara the embodiment of parameshwara who incarnated few thousands of years ago and is today available to his beloved and ardent devotees in the gracious form of arunachaleshwara the presiding deity of the arunachaleshwara temple in tiruvannamalai with this salutation we remember and thus are in when thus invoke arun yogeshwara and his presence as we recall the great leela of his happening in swami ji's own life in the quiet stone corners of the arunachaleshwara temple a rare and blessed devotee may suddenly glimpse a surreal radiant form emerging from the mandapa behind the temple or hear the echo of unforgettable laughter from the steps near the magiram tree on the circumambulation path he may see a flash of a tall handsome young saint resplendent with his long jatas swinging down to his graceful hips and everything else would disappear around him as if a spell is cast and on the one who is bestowed with this blessing for parameshwara himself bestows his darshan only those who have captured him in the net of their sweet yearning arunagiri yogeshwara an embodiment of parameshwara revered in the hindu scriptures grace the physical form the plane a few thousand years ago he retained his human form for hundreds of years and taught the science of enlightenment to his chosen disciples arunagiri yogeshwara is worshiped today as arunachaleshwara the presiding deity of the arunachaleshwara temple with the dhyana shloka that we started this section with even bhagwan raman maharshi refers to arunagiri yogeshwara as a young sage sitting under a vast and mystical banyan tree illuminating with the cosmic truths the elderly venerated rishi seated around him even today centuries after he left his human form arunagiri yogeshwara continues to reappear to his most beloved de- devotees in search for his grace and darshan in his most auspicious form in order to bless the fortunate devotees with his darshan and grace let's now before entering into the next chapter this beautiful chapter of the autobiography of the avatar where swami ji has this relationship with arunagiri yogeshwara the embodiment of parameshwara himself let's watch a brief oneness capsule from that temple when swami ji is doing puja for arunagiri yogeshwara in 2011 
ஜொலித்தது பரம ஞான ஒளியில் குழந்தை ஜொலி ஜொலித்தது பரமஹம்சனித்தன் என்னும் பெயரும் பெற்றது பரம ஞான ஒளியில் குழந்தை ஜொலி ஜொலித்தது பரமஹம்சனித்தன் என்னும் பெயரும் பெற்றது அருணை மனையில் அழகு கடவுள் அவதரித்தது அருணை மனையில் அழகு கடவுள் அவதரித்தது கடவுள் அவதரித்தது
we just saw was the Jiva Samadhi of Arunigi Yogeshwara, the living presence of that cosmic energy. In all great temples, there is actually the Jiva Samadhi of incarnations. That is why they are so powerful. The Tirupati temple is Konganavar Samadhi. The Palani temple is Bogar Samadhi. Madurai temple is, of course, the Samadhi for Meenakshi Amman and Sundareshwara himself. The massive Arunachaleshwara temple of Tiruvannamalai has been built on the Jiva Samadhi of Arunagri Yogeshwara. And prayers are offered to Arunagri Yogeshwara first in this temple, even before the presiding deity of Arunachaleshwara. With this embodiment of Paramashiva, four saplings of the tree, Kalpataru tree from Kailasha, were brought down to Bhuloka, to planet Earth, and planted in various locations. The Kalpa Briksha tree is the majestic banyan tree under which Paramashiva revealed the sacred secrets of the Agama, the applied science of enlightenment. These saplings have grown over the last thousand years, growing for a few hundred years, reproducing in new generations, and then themselves dying and then growing back again. The original Kalpa Riksha tree is described in the first verse of the Kamika Agama. Kailasha Dakshine Shringe Nana Shakcharya Samandite Pavrida Va. Vata Vrikshota Sachanchani Ti Vrishrite. This verse means on the southern summit of the Mount Kailasa, associated with the multifarious wonderments, there is a seat under the fully grown Vata tree, the banyan tree, which seat is thickly covered by its shadow and which is exceedingly wide with a tiger skin placed around it. It is auspiciously beautified with gem studs over it. Lord Srikanta, who is controlling authority of the universe, who is a great god, is seated on it, being worshipped by a host of devas, dhanavas, gandharvas, siddhas, vidyadharas, and such celestial groups. It has the lineage of great enlightened guru Arunagiro Ishvara, the embodiment of Lord, of Lord Shiva himself. This is from the Srimad Kamika Agama, the Purva Pada, verse 1.1. 1. The banyan tree in the current headquarters of Nityananda Pitam Giridi on the outskirts of Bengaluru is the eighth generation of this tree. The young banyan tree in Arunachaleshwara temple in Tiruvannamalai. And the young avatar used to climb on as a child in which to hide from going to school is another sapling planted by the hands of Arunagiri Yogeshwara himself. Thinking in the grand scheme of the universe, Arunagiri Yogeshwara planted these saplings just for the continuation of his mission in the chosen form of Swamiji. Let's now watch the video on the sacred banyan tree. But the banyan tree is used as an energy satellite to send intense energy and spiritual experiences and everything to all of you and to receive all your prayers and fulfill by the superconscious energy. But the banyan tree, the Kalpataru banyan tree is used as the energy satellite by the superconscious energy, by divine, by God, to reach out to all of you. Please understand, even the materials which you are receiving, vibhuti, kumkum, sandalwood, paste, honey, 
Rudraksha. Now I am going to start sending Navaratnas, nine gems. I want all of you to know all these objects from the matter it becomes energy it reaches to Bidhi Banyan tree Kalpadar Banyan tree wherever the objects may be see even when the Akshatas were teleported from Madurai it first came to this Banyan tree then to my Ananda Ganda from there it travels to the disciple or a deity which is who is receiving if the deity is receiving it reaches to the deity or if the disciple is receiving it reaches the Ananda Ganda of the disciple then it gets materialized in the hand. But the Banyan tree acts like an energy center. Relay and receiving center. Cosmos uses. The divine energy uses the Bidhi Kalpavriksha Banyan tree to relate with all of us, to relate with the world. I can say the Bidhi Kalpavriksha Banyan tree is a substitute for a living master whatever can happen to you in the presence of a living master can happen in the presence of the Bidhi Kalpavriksha Banyan tree the magical experience of the guru-disciple relationship for millions of his own disciples, kindling in them the yearning to discover the same sweet space of disciplehood and the bliss of Advaita, the version of Arnagiriyogishwara and the nine and a half month period during the life of the avatar appears as the most Pivotal nine and a half months in the Leela of his childhood. About the Arunagiri Yogeshwara relationship, the avatar says, It was my fantasy of a guru disciple relationship. He says, I manifested in Turiya state and lived. Normal, normal man will fantasize in any Swapna state, the dream state, as an incarnation. My fantasies happen in the Turiya state. In this next video, Swamiji tells us how he is Arunagiri Yogeshwara himself. I am Arunagiri Yogeshwara talking, who is possessing this body and operating. I am an alien outside human society. I have brought this new enlightenment DNA into this body and I am sharing with the world and I am going to, I have already established enlightenment ecosystem which is very powerful and reproducing powerfully and I am going to multiply thousands and thousands of this enlightenment ecosystem and it has already started happening. Nobody can stop. It's all the, the period, the crucial period, they could have stopped is over. The crossroads are done. I have already done, gathered the critical mass required. Now the snowballing effect is happening. I am going to be initiating lakhs and lakhs of sannyasis. At least 300 crore people are going to manifest powers. 300 crore people are going to manifest powers. I am going to make third eye more common than two eyes. Which I have already started doing. Now on a wild scale I am going to do. Whatever you think as your strength. Like how much cash you have. How much gold you have. How much money you have in the bank. What all properties you have, your secret passwords, passcodes, your strength secrets, you will tell only to your son or your daughter to whom you are going to give your inheritance. Same way, most important powerful secrets Paramashiva has given to his son Muruga, Subramanya, in Agama called Sarvanyanotra Agama. 
all the powerful secrets the father will tell only to his son it is too secret i am going to open that agama and give all the essence of all those secrets secrets of charya pada lifestyle secrets of kriya pada secrets of yoga pada and secrets of jnana pada i am not only going to teach you i am going to give you exactly what paramashiva gave it to subramanya because paramashiva himself is manifesting to this being now giving you all exactly what was given to subramanya nothing is required from your side just sit like innocent subramanya muruga at the feet of paramashiva i assure you whatever was given to subramanya the whole life will be given to you now not just words teachings not even just experience life itself i am talking to each one of you sitting in your room i'll make you all subramanya actually the dhyana shloka for guru for me that is arunagiri yogeshwara sahasra dala pankaje sakala sita rasmit prabham varabha varabhaya tarambujam vimala ganda pushp pushpambaram prasanna vadana kshanam sakala devata rupinam smare shirasi hamsakam tadapinam purvam guru Sahasra Dala Pankaje, on the thousand petal lotus, Varabhaya Tarambujam, with lotus-like hands that gives boons and protect. Prasanna Vadanai Kshanam, Prasanna cannot be translated just as smiling or welcoming. Alive, illuminate, graceful, Prasanna is something which brings you to the present. Sakala Devata Rupinam, embodiment mm -hmm. or in the form of Sakala mm -hmm. Devatas, all the gods and goddesses. Smaret Shirasi Hamsakam, Tadapinam Purvam Gurum, means with my breathing flow, Hamsakam. The, the revelation lingered in the air and fade off. as the avatar dissolves into the space of advaita and no words emerge or age needed for now swami ji remembers his relationship with arunagiri yogeshwara so lovingly a true example of how we should all relate to guru let's now watch him explain this निनंदेशरीम अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरु परंपरा वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू विथ माय लव एंड रेस्पेक्ट्स आई वेलकम ऑल द डिवोटीज डिसाइपल्स समाजीस सत्संगीस श्री महंस महंस कोटारीस तानेदार्स sitting with us all over the world through nityananda tv facebook live youtube live and through two way video conferencing having nayana diksha first thing i welcome all the nityananda yogam participants
the participants have been invited to tell you honestly personally hand picked <laughs> Only 102 were handpicked from the database of 17,000. The 17,000 was the database presented to me, and 102 were handpicked, and 90 of you have made it. Welcome home. The purpose of the Nityananda Yogam is what I experienced with Arunagiri Yogeshwara. I want all of you to experience that. I did not have a structured class with him, but it was a no-break inner awakening. <laughs> it was literally no-break inner awakening. Only one thing I have not seen, he going for one, two, three, I have not seen, that's all. And I am very sure because of Divya Sarira, he does not have. Other than that, I have seen everything. It's literally 24 hours life with him. His classes, when he teaches, if he talks 10 word, at least 10 terabyte material will be downloaded. Understand? If he talks 10 word to me, 10 terabyte material will be downloaded into my brain. <laughs> The way he taught me, trained me, it was a unique style. You should actually call that as a Arunagiri Yogeshwara style. <laughs> he had his own unique style. So much has been transmitted. So much has happened. Physically, I enjoyed him only for 11 and a half months, less than 12 months. If I were to put it more precise, 9 and a half months. If I were to count exact dates, because there were few days gap. Only when I was looking to put the whole thing for autobiography, I was seeing there were few days when the temple had a festival where they will bring the deity in that area he will not come out and sit sometimes he used to take me for a walk and we will sit near the hill and listen I listen to him so much has happened That nine and a half months spread in that one year. Eleven and a half months spread. But only nine and a half months was the if I have to remove all the holidays or the days where we did not spend together. It was not a structured, such a spontaneous transmission. Just that nine and a half months has done so much in me. Still I am singing his glory, building thousands of temples for him. <laughs> the devotion he commands over me and the loyalty I carry it is literally loyalty towards myself.
that space of sadashivoham loyalty towards that experience joy and gratitude towards that space thousands and thousands of unsaid happenings and tons of things not only i have not said i will never be able to say because when he utters a word for example if he says adarvana veda the chapter where the science of sound is explained by the time he completes this word that whole veda is downloaded already when he gives the reference i can just verify internally and see the chapter and the shloka i don't know how i can even say it make you guys understand maybe when i do the same thing with our bala sons and they demonstrate it then you will be able to understand what i am saying see in 2003 i told i had my third day awakened at the age of 12 people were hmm some believed some trusted some had a hope it may be true many had eyebrows raised many had their reactions but now when i made the balasans do it when thousands manifest it the statement looks very well why why 12 looks too late <laughs> for swami ji 12 looks too late <laughs> when i uttered the same word in 20 sorry 2003 he claims at the age of 12 he had third eye awakening now it seems to be 12 too late i think swami ji is junior to me many of the balasans will say <laughs> i am much senior to swami ji <laughs> i am only 7 6 i am doing 360 12 i think swami ji is little late <laughs> maybe when my balasans manifest what i am saying now that when he uttered the word atharvana veda and a chapter it just like a electric shock something will happen and i know the whole atharvana veda when he utters the word mahanirvana or kularnava immediately it will be like it will land on me like a huge a powerful spiritual shock and i'll just know the whole content and that current of it and when he says seventh chapter third verse says i'll just i can see clearly in my inner space yes that book exists this is the chapter and this is the verse i tasted sarvanyatva during that period please understand i got it permanently when he merged into me is different that is separate but tasting it physically where you can hold the hand of the sarvanyatva i picked up the habit of this biting nail by biting his nail only and he will be so sweet and polite 
I'll be sitting and cleaning his nail and cutting his nail with my own hand, cleaning it and biting it and removing the extreme passions of Sadashiva. In those days, nail katrandal was not lifestyle for us. The big, it is, it used to be, I think, seven or some, seven o'clock something was the name of that razor, blade. It used to be popular in those days, with that blade only will cut the nail. The school used to have a pencil sharpener. That sharpener, there will be small blade on that sharpener. So from the broken sharpener, I'll get that small blade. With that only I'll remove his nail, <laughs> cut his nail. And what doesn't come out, I'll put the teeth and pull it out. <laughs> Bite and pull it out. He'll be just sitting with all the passions and a smile in his face. All right, do. I literally tasted the Sarvanyatva. I literally wanted what I went through, what I experienced, what I enjoyed with Arunagiri Yogeshwara to become your experience. That is why I invited all of you for Nityananda Yoga. Sittano, Sivan Muktano, Pitano, Yetano, Yedun Diria the Galatum, Atani and Arulai, Art Konda, Nyana Chitani, Arunagiri Yogi. Tadat Kola Kuda, Tavarasaya Poga Vendum. Tawar itu siapa pawa daripada teriada, ada wajah di nilai, mandi adat tat kunda man ambalawan. Tawar itu siapa pogum berada ilmu, mandi tadat tat kudal. Adat teriada, ada wajah di nilai, mandi adat tat kunda man. Is a symbol of guru disciple relationship. Is symbol of all the best things you can see in the planet Earth, whether it is patience, love, compassion, sacrifice, joy, knowledge, power. The complete manifestation of Sadashivatva. Complete manifestation of Sadashivatva. Whatever said and said. Which can't be said. Let all the greatest best happening, happened in Sadashivatva between me and Arunagiri Yogi Ishwara. Let it happen between me and you all. I welcome all the Nityananda Yoga participants to enjoy the space of Aranagiri Yogi Ishwara. Sadashiva. I was so enamored by him. Literally, he bundled up himself into this body. Like, <laughs> how? Then gunny bag of cotton gets bundled up into one gunny bag. Imagine, that is exactly the way he made himself so 
thicker and thicker and thicker and poured it in this one body and bundled himself up completely in this one body. Being in love and all is too small word to describe that relationship between me and Arunagiri Yogeshwara. He just bundled up himself into this one body. I think maybe when you experience, you will understand. See, only when I make thousands of people radiate the experience I had, that is the evidence that I had the experience. Because till then it can only be story. So whatever I went through with Arunagiri Yogeshwara, let it happen in all of you. You guys will tell the world it is true. That is why I am saying the Balasans will be the biggest Nityanandas witnesses. most sweetest, greatest Nityananda's witnesses. Navaratri Utsavam is beginning yesterday with Mahalaya Amavasya. The rituals, the preliminary rituals, Purvanga Puja has started formally. The precise exact Navaratra, nine nights, starts from tomorrow. Navaratri starts from tomorrow. Even during this time, when deaths due to the COVID-19 pandemic are still very high and accelerating. Swamiji is still giving us that opportunity for us to connect with Swamiji and empower ourselves, become stronger and stronger with the powerful cognitions from Sri Kailasa. Just a sincere connection with Swamiji, sitting in oneness with Swamiji has empowered thousands of people the Parama Shivoham program, as well as the Akanda Nirvikalpa Samadhi Jnana Yajna, are both global movements which were started by Supreme Pontiff of Hinduism, His Divine Holiness Bhagwan Nityan, the Parama Shivam, Swamiji, in order to heal the world of the effects of coronavirus and its effects. More than the illness itself, the whole world is thrown into a huge wave of depression and uncertainty. Our hopes and dreams are dissolved and we are remaining at, stuck at home. The avatar, by his presence, empowers consciousness, the will of millions in his space, just through quantum entanglement, just through Shakti Bada, collective healing and shifting the gears to a super conscious breakthrough of mankind, bringing quantum enlightenment through quantum entanglement. Thousands are manifesting the highest powerful cognitions about themselves, life, and the world, manifesting higher states of consciousness through power manifestation. When you are constantly entangled towards the ultimate positivity, you become a strength for the shifting of gears of the entire humanity and bring the world more closer to a super conscious breakthrough. Foremost among all other nations, Sri Kailasa has been offering a clear solution for the psychological turmoil that is rampaging the minds of all ages, youth and elderly alike. Since March 20th, 2020, the Supreme Pontiff of Hinduism, Swamiji, has been conducting the Paramashivoham Level 2 program and has 
done this in order to heal the world from coronavirus and bring the superconscious breakthrough. In this 16 hour, 16 day program, over 5,000 people worldwide have transformed their lives and attained quantum enlightenment through quantum entanglement. This simple process of quantum entanglement is an extremely unique and rare gift to the humanity to achieve enlightenment effortlessly just by the glimpse, the Nayani Diksha of Paramashiva. Sanatana Hindu Dharma takes responsibility for the world in this time of need. Therefore, as its Supreme Pontiff, Swamiji has untiringly taken class after class and initiated participants into the science of power manifestation. And in this process, participants break deeply rooted patterns and sufferings by beginning to manifest innate superhuman capabilities which are dormant in every human being. This program is the only solution in the world offered by Sri Kailasa to raise humanity to the next breakthrough in superconsciousness. Just as we have witnessed today how Swamiji had a beautiful connection, Shakti Nipadha with Arunagiri Yogeshwara and so many other gurus who had created the Vata Varana for him to manifest the superconscious energy and transmit it for us today. We have that opportunity to have that sincere, beautiful connection with the guru which relieves us from so many deeply rooted sufferings. If you want to, you can register at paramashivoham.org in order to experience for yourself a newfound inspiration for your life and start over anew. Even though we may be famous, Whatever you think as your strength, like how much cash you have, how much gold you have, how much money you have in the bank, what all properties you have, your secret passwords, passcodes, your strength secrets, you will tell only to your son or your daughter to whom you are going to give your inheritance. Same way. Most important powerful secrets Paramashiva has given to his son Muruga, Subramanya, in Agama called Sarvanyanotragama. All the powerful secrets the father will tell only to his son. It is too secret. I am going to open that Agama and give all the essence of all those secrets. Secrets of Charyapada lifestyle, secrets of Kriyapada, secrets of Yogapada, and secrets of Jnanapada. I am not only going to teach you, I am going to give you exactly what Paramashiva gave it to Subramanya. Because Paramashiva himself is manifesting to this being now, giving you all exactly what was given to Subramanya. Nothing is required from your side. Just sit like innocent Subramanya. Muruga at the feet of Paramashiva. I assure you, whatever was given to Subramanya, the whole life will be given to you now. Not just words, teachings, not even just experience. Life itself. I am talking to each one of you sitting in your room. I will make you all Subramanya. With this, it has come time. Let us now await the darshan of Paramashiva and prepare ourselves to soak in the divine revelations from Paramashiva himself in the Nityananda Satsang. Let us all sit with our head, neck and spine in a straight line. 
and chant the Mahavakya. Om Nityananda Paramashivoham Nityananda Paramashivoham Om 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 Nityananda Paramashivoham Shiva Samaramba Nityanande Shwari Parashakti Madhyama Asmadacharya Parayanta Vande Guru Parampara Paramashiva's message directly from Kailasa. Listen. Invoke cosmic being. In your identity, you can invoke Ganesha or Subramanya, Shiva, Devi, Vishnu, Surya, any one of the cosmic being, Guru, Listen, invoke cosmic being in your identity. You will manifest such extraordinary energy and higher life. Understand? Fundamentally, Hinduism is science of Invoking cosmic beings in you. That is why before even you start developing the primal OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. Understand? The primal OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, you start developing before the age of seven. What I call as root pattern. Being driven by fear and greed. Please understand. Listen carefully. All human beings. Other than who are initiated before the age of seven. And started manifesting their Ishta Devata. Other than those few, blessed, fortunate, 
who are initiated and started manifesting their Ishta Devata before the age of seven. Everyone else is suffering with OCD. Please understand society, unconscious humanity, politicians, everyone wants you to be in OCD, having obsessive compulsive disorders. So you can be exploited. The idea money is security for your future. The idea of insurance, what do you call 401k? In India, the retirement insurance. All these are obsessive compulsive disorders. You are made to believe. You are forced to believe. The obsessive compulsive disorder in the core of your being and various stupid ideas you are made to believe and that ideas start developing obsessive compulsions like a, see in the beginning you are forced you are brainwashed by society mass media cult that money is the only security for future. Then, once you start getting brainwashed, the obsessive compulsive disorder starts. In every level, you feel money is the only thing in the life. Then all the beliefs, thought currents related to that money, and related to the actions you perform because of those obsessive compulsive disorder, everything put together, I call it as delusion. People who brainwash you, methodology they use to brainwash you and how you start getting brainwashed in the initial level and how it evolves as obsessive compulsive disorder after some time even if you know you had enough money to buy anything which money can buy even after acquiring so much money you don't stop working for money because by now it has become obsessive compulsive disorder I tell you the corona has taught a big lesson for the humanity. Money is not security for life or future. I wanted to tell every human being consciousness, rich consciousness is the most Powerful security. If you can manifest a power, if you can just live blissfully in an untouched way, if you can just radiate consciousness within you and the people around you, that is the most powerful, important security. I tell you. I am making multiple statements today. I will now organized way present it to you all. Listen. First thing. Get initiated and start manifesting the cosmic being in your identity. Understand Paramashiva exists. He is a living being. All powerful, all knowing. Who just creates, maintains, 
destroys, rejuvenates, puts in delusion, pulls out of delusion, liberates. Who plays with these tattvas and principles is a living being alive who can respond to you now. Invoke him in your identity. What do you feel as you? The core of you. Listen. When you invoke him, Invoking him in you needs only two things, initiation and your conscious will persistence requesting him, asking him to manifest in you. Invoke him, see when you invoke him, the fear based obsessive compulsive disorders become irrelevant. I am not saying don't go to job. I am not saying don't earn money. I am only saying let this job and earning money not be your OCD. Don't you see tons of things you are performing, you are doing as OCD. See for example, We both may be sitting in the same Nityananda Sabha. If a snake comes there, you will also move out, I will also move out. But with a different context. You can check my pulse, it will not increase. I will not move out because of OCD. Understand? Listen carefully. I am not saying don't go for a job. I am not saying don't make money. No. I am only saying don't do it as a OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. Do it out of extreme clarity. Hindu is a being who invokes cosmic being in his identity. Your Ishta Devata becomes your core existence. You can have, the Hinduism gives beautiful choices. You can connect with Ganesha, Subramanya, Shiva, Shiva's multiple forms, Nataraja, Kala Bhairava, Swaranagarshana Bhairava, Soma Askanda, Tyaga Raja, Arunachaleshwara, Sundareshwara, Sukha. Different forms of Paramashiva, Dakshinamurti, Veerabhadra, Different forms you can connect. Para Shakti, Vishnu, Krishna, Rama, Anuman, Surya. You can choose your Ishta Devata in Hindu tradition. Even Guru cannot change your Ishta Devata. If you say, I have not chosen my Ishta Devata, please you choose for me. Guru can choose. But if you say, I have chosen, this is my Ishta Devata, please give me the mantra. He cannot say, no, 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 your Ishta is different. No. The Ishta Devata you chose for that only Guru can give mantra. Understand? Invoke the Ishta Devata in your identity. 
morning when you wake up you are waking up should not be obsessive compulsive disorder ocd no it should be iid ishta inspired decision not ocd but iid ishta inspired decision use this word ishta inspired decision iid not ocd i tell you when you act react based on ocd you feel stuck suffocated you don't know how to do what to do and finally end up in literally depression frustration living dead or suicide itself all the problems of the human human life all the sufferings and pains humanity is going through the source is ocd you started developing from your root pattern before the age of 7 from your root pattern you develop your ocd that is why in hindu tradition as early as possible the child should be initiated and it should start manifesting ishta devata ishta devata inspired ishta devata mantra ishta devata manifesting in its being see for example morning the moment i became aware of this world the first thing is parama shiva manifesting there is no ocd for me to jump out of bed no fear or greed or ocd to jump out of bed parama shiva is manifesting come on now parama shiva will do his work what a way to wake up and i know my disciples are waiting for me to see me my kids are waiting all over the world my disciples are waiting all over the world understand waking up due to ocd manifest all types of complications and problems any one who can wake up early morning due to iid ishta devata inspired decision no ocd iid ishta devata inspired decision just 11 days i guarantee all your blood pressure diabetes everything will become normal there will not be any stress on your system my whole work in this paramashivoham level 2 is to move you out of ocd to iid obsessive compulsive disorder lifestyle to ishta devata inspired decision making lifestyle from ocd to iid this is ishta devata is actually a living cosmic being even this neo hindus the anti guru hindus don't believe these gods are really really alive they think no 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 this are all some principle defined and like a caricature cartoon drawn to explain certain principle they loose up some law ganapati is real is a living cosmic being 
when you invoke him, he actually comes with that big elephant face, part belly, Brahmanda in his belly, and asks, Oh my son, what do you want? Oh my dear, what do you want? Why you invoked me? He is real. Please understand, I am not spreading any superstition. Because I have a religious freedom now, I am telling you the truth. If I tell the same thing sitting inside Indian society, they may arrest me under that superstitious act. Fortunately, now I am in a place where I have a religious freedom to teach Hinduism. So I am telling you the truth as it is. This anti-guru Hindus don't believe all these gods are real. They think these are all some philosophical representation. No. No. Listen. He comes. Eats. Drinks coffee with you. I am not lying. I am telling you the truth. And I tell you guys. I am, I know I am talking to my disciples. Whom I have absolute love. I want you guys to know I am in love with you guys. All of you have done so much of sacrifice and tyaga for me. I know each one of you how much you are all working for me. Whether you give your time or treasure or talent. As I said that day, there are more. See, many devotees attend satsang more regularly than me. I love you all guys. I tell you. In Tamil there is a proverb. Unda vittik randagam sayyade uppittavarai ullalavum ninai. Person who gave salt for your food forever be integrated to that person. And the house in which you ate never ever Miss your integrity to that house. I tell you, with that sincerity, really, Ganapati, Paramashiva, Devi, Vishnu, all of them are real living beings. You can invoke them, they appear. They understand. Every day, Almost one or two hours, I will sit and talk to all of them. I don't know how many of you had the opportunity to see my personal puja, Anmartha puja. Almost two hours, I will be sitting. If they are not real, I am not the fool to waste two hours of my life. I am too productive guy. I am very workaholic. And I count every minute. Is it useful for my life? Two hours I'll casually sit and talk to each one of them, put flower on them, put little water and then I'll have nevedyam for them and light one dupe stick and I'll be chatting with them and I'm very lazy guy, you guys don't know, I'm very lazy guy, I will not lift the hand even once unnecessarily but in the two hours the number of actions I perform if you see Everyone, I'll put the flower and then bow down. And the way I smile and talk to each one of them, even if you see that you will melt down, all your OCD will disappear, you will move to the space of IID. I'm telling you. They are all really, really real. Don't think they are just some, some principle painting done by some Rishi to explain certain concept and principle. They are all real beings, cosmic beings.
one advantage my disciples have see all my disciples who feel hey, swami ji will not lie to me and he will only tell the truth to me for you guys who have that feeling eh hey, swami ji will tell only truth to me he will not lie to me the biggest advantage you have is you are being immediately connects with that consciousness with that beings your identity opens with them because your identity is convinced eh? swami ji told ganesha is real he is real swami ji told kalabairava is real he is real swami ji told paramashiva is real he is real that is the way actually initiation happens i have seen when i was growing up you see i grew up in a large family where a lot of kids i have seen one of my uncle's son kid he was only 3 4 years whenever he gets angry and throws tantrum wants to get things in his way he will roll on the floor and kick the legs scream worst thing is he will do one two and on that itself he will jump and roll just to get attention <laughs> attention <laughs> just to torture the parents because now the parents have to clean him up completely and make him <laughs> take bath and it's almost like a one hour work to cleaning him up he will do 1 2 3 1 2 and roll on that <laughs> he will do all kinds of tantrum dirty himself see when he rolls the whole hall will become <laughs> dirty <laughs> with his 1 2 he will do all kinds of tantrum but he is so brilliant the biscuit in his hand he will never allow that biscuit to touch his 1 2 <laughs> he will keep that very safely and <laughs> i have seen he will be he will be messing up with his one two he will kick that he will roll on that but his biscuit will be very safe and he will be eating the biscuit doing all this drama doing all this tantrum the center of the house he will do one two and then he will roll on that he will be having his biscuit in his hand the biscuit will no way be affected and he will be eating his biscuit in between the crying and tantrum <laughs> he will never <laughs> compromise on his biscuit and <laughs> nothing will touch his biscuit but he will be dirtying the whole house and dirtying himself absolutely <laughs> but his biscuit will be very safe and clean and he will be eating this biscuit same way i have seen many disciples they throw tantrum throw all kinds of dirt mud scream fight amongst each other and with the sangar everything but one thing eh swami ji's initiation is there for me and somehow i will get enlightened let me hold on to that that one biscuit they will make, make sure it is protected <laughs> understand all of you those who trust swami ji won't lie to me i tell you how much you are alive in your body 
to that frequency what i am telling you is the truth parama shiva is living being cosmic being he can manifest in your identity the moment you you, you invoke him request him connect with him all your lifestyle can be moved away from ocd to iid i tell you all your decisions and its good bad effects results success failure everything finally take it to parama shiva and cry want to express your frustration express it to him want to express your love express it to him want to show your gratitude show it to him want to fight fight with him do everything with your ishta devata it can be ganapati it can be shiva it can be muruha it can be your guru i tell you just practice this one in few weeks your life will start moving from obsessive compulsive disorder based to ishta devata inspired decision based iid you are liberated i tell you whole world is suffering so much with the after effect and side effect and all the other indirect sufferings and pains and depressions and tortures of corona only this nityananda sangha this kailasa guys so happy neither depression nor bothered about quarantine happily living because already many of you guys have moved to the lifestyle of ishta devata inspired decision this covid 19 neither the covid 19 virus touched kailasa or our devotees nor its side effects the quarantine effect or other fears insecurity nothing has touched kailasa or devotees of course it cannot touch me that's different and it neither touched kailasa nor touched any of our devotees the reason is most of you who are initiated already started living the life of ishta devata inspired decision iid the ocd is no more lifestyle i tell you when you understand there is no death for you you just live 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 as long as you want and you just change bodies it's not that once you understand you will not earn money you will not have bank balance no you will have all that but all of it will not be due to ocd obsessive compulsive disorder fear based it will not be fear based you will just do it as a plan based okay so i will have all this wealth and keep it there for the this purpose and after that whatever is there let it go to the kids and if i want to take one more body i will i may want to come back into my as my grandson in my son's family or my daughter's family so i will leave all the wealth to these guys so they will take care of me that is why in hindu tradition it's called peran peran the grandson or the grand daughter 
is called Peran Perti means the grandfather comes back as grandson, grandmother comes back as granddaughter. If they have to take one more birth, it's a science and it is possible. First thing I want all of you to do is get out of this OCD lifestyle. No stress. Do not do anything due to obsessive compulsive disorder. Earning, saving, paying your bills, nothing should be due to OCD. Everything should be IID. Ishta Devata inspired decision. This shift can happen by initiation. And Connecting with this, your Ishta Devata, constantly talking to the Ishta Devata, developing a relationship. See, when you start developing a relationship, sometimes what you pray to your Ishta Devata, sometimes what you ask Paramashiva, it may not become immediately reality, successful. You may not know the reason. But be very clear, have a little patience to trust him and connect and build the relationship. Okay, I asked, you did not do, but that's okay. I am not going to fight with you or I am not going to question you now. I do not know the reason. Please, make me understand, give me the understanding to have reason. Or if you feel I should not know the reason, then don't even bother. Just give me the cosmic logic that I should go along with you and I should just connect with you and let our relationship be the first priority. Everything else is second priority. Everything else can come later. Then you are like that, that my uncle's son, very shrewd. He may jump into the one, two and throw tantrum, make the whole house dirty, make himself dirty but never Biscuit. The biscuit will be very safe and careful between his hand and mouth <laughs> without one small piece of the biscuit getting dirty. <laughs> I have some of the Gurukul kids like that. I won't name them now. Some of my kids, they will do all kinds of tantrum. They will make themselves dirty, others dirty, fight, do everything. But that biscuit, my relationship with Swamiji, that will be absolutely clear. <laughs> my relationship with Swamiji is the biscuit. That <laughs> will never get dirty. And very shrewd about protecting that. <laughs> they will throw tantrum on everything, everybody. But that biscuit will be clearly very shrewd way they will protect that biscuit. I know now many kids are smiling. If you are smiling, listening to this story, then you are that kid. <laughs> Understand? <laughs> Ishta Devata inspired decision. IID. Move away from OCD and move to IID.
I tell you. If you understood this one point, actually first thing you need to know, you need to internalize. It's because you are constantly functioning as OCD, you feel so much pained about your existence and life. You are frustrated about everything. It's like you, because you have to live, you are living. That is what OCD makes you feel. Drop that. Even if you have everything, OCD will make you feel suffocated, present. But IID, Ishta Devata inspired decision, even if you don't have anything, you will just be in ecstasy and so much space and enjoy. Essence of today's satsang is move from OCD to IID. Actually, if you understand what I am talking, please watch this satsang few more times. You will understand because I put many dots. All these dots will fall in sync. If you listen to this intensely, you will start living without panic attack, without fears, without obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD. You think OCD, only if it expresses as actions it is OCD. No, there is something called internal OCD. You will be compulsively thinking only in that direction. You are brainwashed so much. You will compulsively think only in that direction. Like whenever you get angry, this is the exact direction you will be forced to think. You are brainwashed to think and you will think only in that direction. Obsessive compulsive disorder internally and externally starts from your root pattern. If you start invoking a cosmic being in you and start connecting, it can be, as I said, Ganapati, Subramanya, Shiva, Devi, Vishnu, Surya, your own Guru, And connecting with that Ishta Devata day and night, your life will start moving to IID, Ishta Devata inspired decision, not OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. Then your whole life will become heaven, Kailasa. Just you will see the Kailasa starts manifesting in, around you. The whole ecosystem will change. The whole ecosystem around you will change. You will get right friends, happy people, inspiring lifestyle, great job, large money, more than all this extreme fulfillment. You will feel, wow, what a life. You will live because you have a purpose, inspired. You will not be alive just because you are born and don't know how to die. No, you will not be dragging yourself. OCD makes you suffocated and dragging. IID makes you ecstatic and inspired. What I am talking, if it clicks with you, join Paramashivoham level 2 and have initiation. Make those gods 
Kailasas, cosmic beings manifest in you. I tell you, it is possible. Don't think that because I have no other work, I have dressed up all this and I am sitting here. I am not interested in cheating you. You are not that big worthy to cheat. What will I gain by cheating you? You yourself a beggar. I have tons of things only to give you from Kailasa. I have nothing to gain from you. I am talking about the trolls. If somebody thinks I am here to cheat, I have nothing to gain by cheating you and you are not that big guy that I am something to gain from you by cheating. I am telling you. All this dressing up, everything I am introducing, the Kailasas, cosmic beings and the culture to you, they are real. They are real. Only if you wear all this, you will understand how heavy all of them are. It's not like some show. Even for show, it is not that easy to wear all of it and so comfortably, casually carry this. We don't know how many kg each of them. I am telling you. I am just showing all this to invoke those cosmic beings in you. To invoke those cosmic beings in you. Invoking cosmic beings in your identity is the definition of Hindu. Every Hindu should have his Ishta Devata, should be initiated into Ishta Devata connection. Whether mantra or sometimes without mantra, just visualizations are given. Sometimes without even mantra or visualization, just some mandalas are given. Mentally you are supposed to just draw that mandala again and again and again. So, initiations are various level. Your Guru should have initiated you formally in connecting with your Ishta. This is the basic definition of Hindu. There are some Agora Sampradaya. No mantra is given. No visualization is given. No meditation is given. Nothing. Just certain smell they have to create through incense and other items, herbs. And just they have to sit with that smell. That smell is so powerful that it will invoke the presence of the Guru in their system and the brain, whole non-mechanical parts of the brain will open up and it will connect with Guru and they will start manifesting Guru's being and power manifestation. So, you should have initiation connecting you and your Ishta Devata formally. Only that makes you a Hindu. It can be Gayatri Mantra or Samaya Diksha, Shiva Mula Mantra or Vishnu, that Ashta Akshari or Sadakshara. Subramanyas, Shatakshara, it can be anything. You are cosmic being, Ishta Devata, and you are Guru initiating you with your Ishta Devata. That only makes you a Hindu. And I tell you, let your lifestyle be Ishta Devata inspired decisions, not OCDs, obsessive compulsive disorders. You can see how your life used to be OCD and now after initiation, 
connecting with your Ishta Devata, how it became IID. I want all my disciples to make a post today. Five, suffocation and suffering and pain you were going through as OCD and how after initiation, when it became IID, how you become, you are transformed and your life is different. See, OCD, before initiation, before Swamiji, before Nityananda, IID, after initiation, after Swamiji, after Ishtadevata inspired decision, put clear five before Swamiji, OCDs, after Swamiji, IIDs. Do this write-up to show and inspire, enrich everyone so that the new people will understand what initiation can do to them and how they can move from OCD to IID. Make your, your life 100% IID, not even one OCD. That is enlightenment. So with this, I bless you all. Let's all radiate with integrity, authenticity, responsibility, enriching, causing, living Shuddhatvaita Saivam. The state, space, living and radiating the state, space, powers, being, superconsciousness. Kailasa and Kailasa and Kailasa of Paramashiva. Paramashivoham Om Nityananda Paramashivoham The eternal bliss Nityananda Thank you. Be blissful. Nityanandam, living a life of Ishta Devata inspired decision. What is it that like? Every one of us, whether we admit or not, realize or not, we are living a life of obsessive compulsive disorder. Whether it is the food that we eat out of addiction, or whether it is a sleep that is out of depression or simple decisions that we make in life. None of us like to be controlled by anyone. We love a life of freedom. However, 24 seven, we are controlled by our own thoughts. Anything that we do doesn't seem to come out of our real choice, real freedom. However, that the decisions that we make come from our patterns. What Swamiji calls as the obsessive compulsive disorder, we react to life rather than responding to life. So how do we move from this space to live a life of Ishta Devata inspired decision to awaken that cosmic being to manifest in us. That is the gift that Swamiji is giving us through the Paramashivoham level two. Paramashivoham level two, Swamiji has said that it is our lifestyle. Since this whole COVID pandemic, Swamiji has been offering this to the entire humanity, day in and day out. Now we are in season seven. 
where people can participate in this program from anywhere in the world and in two convenient time zones. Nothing is an obstacle, neither distance, nor time, nor money. It is made available for every single one of us to have that super conscious breakthrough and to prepare us for the post COVID world. So we make conscious decisions. Not only that, but we live a life of inspiration and bliss, not compulsion, not fear, not anger, not worry, not depression, but inspired decision. And that gift Swamiji is giving us through Paramashivoham level two. So how do you participate in this program? You can register at paramashivoham.org and with the registration, you will be sent an email with all the details and how to participate in this program from the convenience of your own home. So do not miss this opportunity as Swamiji is raising our consciousness and awakening the highest potential in each one of us to live the best life possible. So register at paramashivoham.org for season seven. Today is the second day, but still it's not late to join the program. Or if you would like to get a glimpse you are welcome to register and experience any single one day capsules that are offered absolutely free of cost. So do not wait. Register now at paramashivoham.org and experience and manifest the ultimate Paramashiva in you. Thank you, Nityanand. Till now, I manifested, revealed the signs of state of Paramashiva space of Paramashiva, powers of Paramashiva. Now, direct process, directly from Paramashiva to manifest the being of Paramashiva because the world is ready. Akash Bhairava is the God who makes all our beings ready for Paramashiva to manifest. It will be centered on Akash Bhairava and making Paramashiva manifest in all of us, the program will be Guru Dakshina based. It will be dependent on you. You can't put any monetary value for it. If 10,000 of us can sit together and manifest the being of Paramashiva, not only we will heal the coronavirus in the whole world, we will give a super conscious breakthrough to the world. Whatever I was talking after the great pass, I am going to make that all into reality. This will be the most life positive happening on planet Earth. All of you, make the decision to attend Paramashivogam from simple integrity. My purpose is to make you attend sincerely, that's all. Whatever you think as your strength, like how much cash you have, how much gold you have, how much money you have in the bank, what all properties you have, your secret passwords, passcodes, your strength secrets, you will tell only to your son or your daughter to whom you are going to give your inheritance. Same way, most important powerful secrets Paramashiva has given to his son Muruga, Subramanya, in Agama called Sarvanyanotra Agama. All the powerful secrets, the father will tell only to his son. It is too secret. I am going to open that Agama and give all the essence of all those secrets. Secrets of Staryapada lifestyle, secrets of Kriyapada, Secrets of Yoga Pada and Secrets of Jnana Pada. I am not only going to teach you 
I am going to give you exactly what Paramashiva gave it to Subramanya. Because Paramashiva himself is manifesting to this being now, giving you all exactly what was given to Subramanya. Nothing is required from your side. Just sit like innocent Subramanya. Muruga at the feet of Paramashiva. I assure you, whatever was given to Subramanya, the whole life will be given to you now. Not just words, teachings, not even just experience. Life itself. I am talking to each one of you sitting in your room. I'll make you all Subramanya. Let's start with the power manifestation. Let's sit straight. Remember, Parameshwara Nyakwale. And let's start with the Sadhguru Vandana. Nityanandam Varmachkuram Kevalam Yanam Orkin Vanvatikam Gavala Sadisham Tattam Asya Dilakshim Ekam Mukhyam Gamalam Achalam Sarvadi Sakshi Bhutam Bhavatikam Pritam Rahitam Sadhguram Tam Namami Such a beautiful space. Bhagavan has given all of us to experience the superconsciousness. With that space, let's start the power manifestation today. Let's go through the security, digital security first. What is power manifestation? Power manifestation is nothing but a cognitive shift that infuses powerfulness into any action state that we are in. It raises the frequency of our body and mind to the ultimate powerfulness through Yatita state. Bhagavan beautifully says when we experience more and more oneness with Paramashiva, the more and more we start understanding the higher reality. We are in the deep sleep, dream state and the waking state but we forget there is a beautiful state of Turiya and Turiya Tita, heightened awareness and consciousness, which is the original state that causing all the reality in us. Doing the power manifestation, we raise ourselves to the higher states of consciousness. We start living the higher states of consciousness only during power manifestation. Who is Paramashiva? Paramashiva is Ajo Muha. Beyond the form and formless, avyakta, the unmanifest and vyakta, manifest. Beyond that, he performs the panchakritya, srishti, stithi, samhara, trabhava and anugraha. Satyojata phase, who manifests, manifestation is manifested, manifestation is sustained, manifestation is rejuvenated, manifestation is pulled out of delusion, manifestation is liberated. Vamadeva, sustenance is maintained, sustained, is sustained, sustained, is regenerated, sustained, is pulled out of delusion, sustained, is liberated. Regeneration, agora phase, uh, regeneration is manifested, regeneration is sustained, regeneration is regenerated, regeneration is pulled out of delusion, and regeneration is liberated. Tat purusha, delusion is manifested, delusion is sustained, delusion is regenerated, Delusion is pulled out of delusion and delusion is liberated. Anugraha, liberation. Liberation is manifested, liberation is sustained, liberation is regenerated, liberation is pulled out of delusion and liberation is liberated. 
ഭഗവാൻ നിത്യാനന്ദ പരമശിവം ഹിസ് ഡിവൈൻ ഹോളിനെസ് ഭഗവാൻ നിത്യാനന്ദ പരമശിവം ഹിസ് ഡിവൈൻ ഹോളിനെസ് ഭഗവാൻ നിത്യാനന്ദ പരമശിവം ഇസ് എ റിവൈവർ ഓഫ് കൈലാഷ ദ ഏഷ്യൻ എൻലൈറ്റൻ സിവിലൈസേഷൻ ദ ഗ്രേറ്റ് കോസ്മിക് ബോർഡർലെസ് ഹിന്ദു നേഷൻ ഹിസ് ഡിവൈൻ ഹോളിനെസ് നിത്യാനന്ദ ഭഗവാൻ നിത്യാനന്ദ പരമശിവൻ ഇസ് അവതാർ ഫ്രം ആൻഡ് ഇസ് സുപ്രീം പോയിന്റ് ഓഫ് ഹിന്ദുസം ഹിസ് ഡിവൈൻ ഹോളിനെസ് Bhagavan Nityananda Parameshwaram has made science of our manifestation, yoga, temple-based university for humanity. So much in order of Kailasha led by His Divine Holiness, Bhagavan Nityananda Parameshwaram and His Nityananda order of monks, nuns, and Hindu diasporas are working for global peace to give a superconscious breakthrough to humanity. Nityananda Hindu University, world's largest with extended campus, in 150 countries is collecting organizing preserving time capsuling decoding spreading and reviving 20 million source book of hinduism and 64 sacred art science of reviving science or like ayurveda music dance sculpting astrology vastu and many more this divine holiness bhagwan nitinanda parameshwaram is 293rd guru maha sanidhanam of shamla pita sarvanya pita ancient apex body of hinduism and present emperor of surya vamsa surangi samrajyam his divine holiness bhagwan nitinanda parameshwaram has survived the worst prosecution of multiple assassination attempt on person and character by anti hindu elements bhagwan has given the science of power manifestation to the humanity which is authentic time tested scientific and full proof shastra pramanas the veda agamas which are the unchangeable truths revealed in the hindu source scriptures the apta pramanas are the rishis munis ganas nayanamars alvars and siddhas who are the authority of hinduism who are the scientists who time tested and verified the science of power manifestation apta pramanas are the <clears throat> avatar who land on the planet earth to give a super conscious breakthrough for the humanity his divine holiness bhagwan nityananda parameshwaram this millennium avatar personal experience of each power manifestation he plays the leela of a human being and how ferociously breaks the boredom and tiredness giving us the space how the super consciousness break through shakshi pramanas bhagwan himself has initiated millions of disciple devotees and followers who have experienced the science of power manifestation the shastra pramana today shastra pramana is from vignana bhairava tantra sutra 120 dharana 95 pramana so the power of consciousness over matter is taken from the vignana bhairava tantra sutra 120 dharana 95 kwachit vastuni bin yat ൃഷ്ടിത്തൃഷ്ടിത്തൃഷ്ടിത്തൃഷ്ടിത്തൃഷ്ടിത്തൃഷ്ടിത്തൃഷ്ടിത്തൃഷ്ടിത്തൃ
get deluded if we decide not to get deluded into the all the reactionary assumption the obsessive compulsive syndrome which is constantly running our life the perception that we have and raise ourselves to the conscious space as our only reality when we decide that when we declare and when we understand that we are that the minute we decide that we are paramashiva from the space of paramashiva life starts happening whatever the inner identity which is illusion is projected as the delusion to the outer world here bhagwan says remove all the ocd remove all the reactionary assumption the cloud moves out the only the source get projected as the reality it will be the existential reality and you can manifest any power you want so beautifully he says more than prayer more than sankalpa de- declaration you understanding you are paramashiva from the space of paramashiva as your only strength you or delusion and illusion is just like a cloud which is gone and simply you are radiating like the sun and that's exactly having fixed one's eye on the particular object one should slowly withdraw the sight from the object as well as slowly eliminate the knowledge of that object and along with that the thoughts and impression of it here he says three things so beautiful slowly eliminate the knowledge you withdraw the sight from the object assuming uh, whatever you know of the object and the knowledge of the object and the thought and uh, impression of the object all are delusion when you remove all the delusion that you have in the perception world and declare yourself in the space of just paramashiva you are paramashiva oh devi one abides in sunya you fall into the space of just oneness and simply the state where there is nothing other than this exists becomes the reality which is the state of all inclusive or infinity you fall into the space of the ultimate paramashiva again and again bhagwan makes us understand that paramashiva is our original space of reality when we stay in that space as our reality simply life is a manifestation the apta pramana when indra was continuously um creating the flood lord krishna lifted the govardhana hill and so beautifully he lifted the hill with his little finger why it is shown is that easy the manifestation is when you are uh, declaring the space of paramashiva the state of paramashiva the being of paramashiva the powers of paramashiva and all the people were saved and simply krishna says anything could be possible when you are declaring that as your original space so beautifully bhagwan has played the leela for us when he was sitting with arnagiri yogeshwara there was a huge boulder and simply by moving his hand the boulder start moving and anagiri yogeshwara simply stopped it without touching it by just telling the boulder to stop this all this clearly makes us understand that we are in the oneness and everything is consciousness and when we declare that we are consciousness simply the manifestation start becoming the ultimate reality the shakshi pramana we have millions of devotees disciple all over the world who have moved different objects on their hand on the silicon on the ground simply by manifesting these great truths when you have the powerful cognition which clicks with you you manifest as powers now let's take an uh, object like coconut or um orange any other fruit is perfectly fine you can place it on your one of your palm keep your palm on a table on or on a place where it is completely flat and make sure it is uh, not rolling off it's very stable in your hand and if you have nyananchan you can apply the nyananchan 
let's sit straight make sure all this video recorded every time you read your record you will understand the great ultimate space that you are don't miss any of this recording of these great power manifestation if you manifest the powers or you don't manifest the if you see the video you will start understanding how much the vibration is happening how it has moved and come back even to the same position simply you will start seeing the reality more clearly so make sure your videos are on and we are re video recording this whole thing sit straight with your head neck and spine in a straight line so that the kundalini raises to the agnya parameshwara who has come down as this divine holiness bhagwan nitinda parameshivam from kailasha remember parameshwara in your third eye again and again remembrance is liberation absolute unclutching to the experience the state of parameshwara bhagwan beautifully said all the old cds all the reactionary assumptions just unclutch from that because they are not you complete completion to the experience the state the space of parameshwara whatever your inner identity whatever you think that is troubling you worrying you all that is also not you and not part of you and cannot affect you that is the most beautiful thing bhagwan said the clouds cannot affect the sun even though it looks like it is blocking the sun it just goes off all we need to do is understand and have a mature cognition not to get engaged with all the incompletion and complete completion with all that gives you the experience or space of parameshwara breaking the boredom and tiredness gives the oneness with parameshwara the powers of parameshwara starts manifesting when you are having no boredom and tiredness with anything that you're doing tyaga parameshwara is your only strength declaring complete integrity with bhagwan to experience the being of parameshwara how bhagwan beautifully said you are parameshwara and parameshwara is the way you exist and manifest your reality when you declare that you become the being of parameshwara to raise the frequency bhagwan has given the mahavakya om nityananda parameshwaram let's deeply with the deep listening chant the mahavakya till our whole being vibrates with the mahavakya make sure you are recording the whole thing now we are going to hold the object in our own palm we can feel the vibration we can feel the heat we can feel it moving or it just falling and rolling off all that are our manifestation we are not looking for perfection we are looking for experience so let's start this 10 minute cycle with chanting the mahavakya intensely let's sit straight and clutch from all the outer world and be the space i am parameshwara and that's my only strength and start chanting om nityananda parameshwaram parameshwaram om nityananda parameshwaram om nityananda parameshwaram Parameshwara's third eye manifesting all our third eye. Let the Amrita pour. Let the Varni open up. Manifest in all of us. Let Parameshwara overflow. Manifest the power in all of us today. Om Yananda Parameshwaram. Om Yananda Parameshwaram. 
So beautiful, you can stop the recording and we'll start the second level. Now, if you felt the vibration, the heat, the moving of the object, whatever is on your hand, you have done the level one. Now, we're going to make the other person also experience the same thing. You can give the object or if they are in the Zoom or any other place, you can ask them to take a coconut and place it in their hand. They can place their hand on a table or they can have it um, on their, on themselves, on their knee. But make sure the hand is very straight and the object is not just rolling off, it's stable in their hand. Ask them to take a video recording of that and post it for you. Make sure they're re recording the whole thing. And tell them that they can feel the vibration, they'll feel the heat, and they'll feel that coconut rolling off their hand. Explain to them. Now, let's sit straight with the head, neck, and spine in a straight line. Remember, Bhagwan Paramashiva in your third eye, absolute unclutching to experience the state of Paramashiva. Each of the experience is Paramashiva. You're unclutching uh, from the outer world identity, unclutching, doing a complete completion from your inner world identity to experience the space of Paramashiva, experience the oneness, the darshans of Paramashiva, experience the oneness with Paramashiva, Tyaga, complete integrity that Bhagavan Paramashiva is the only strength that you're going to experience. Just the appointment with you and your innermost self, Paramashiva space. And chanting the Mahavakya, having the will persistence again and again, very clearly see how you're manifesting this as reality. Chant the Mahavakya to raise your frequency. We'll start another 10 minutes. Intensely chant the Mahavakya. Your whole be being should be vibrating with it. And 
simply connect to your innermost being that i am paramashiva and i'm manifesting this as my reality bhagwan please show me how i manifest these beautiful great experience so start chanting the maha vakya om nityananda paramashivoham om nityananda paramashivoham
Shiva's third eye, manifesting all our third eye. Let the Amrita pour, let the Varni open up, manifest in all of us. Let Paramashiva overflow, manifest the power in all of our third Om Jnana Paramashiva Om Jnana 
Nityananda, so beautiful. It's an amazing experience. If they have felt any heat or vibration or moving the coconut or more rolling off the coconut, anything they experience, please post it in all the social media. Tinyurl.com slash palm manifestation is the group. You can post if you're part of Paramashiroham. Please update in His Divine Holiness, Bhagavan Nitinda Parameshwam page, the videos that you have beautifully manifested as your reality. Every time we connect, even play the video, we experience the same oneness and same ultimate Parameshwara space. Make sure you share with as many people as possible and cause their ultimate reality. When we do the enriching and causing we are pulling ourselves out of delusion and getting liberated this whole process is given for us as far manifestation it's the manifesting powerful cognition that we understand as jnanapada in the satsang and we manifest as powers as our understanding and share with the humanity as our cognition and causing others to, for higher reality for their experience, simply we get liberated. The more and more expansion happens in us when we share all these power manifestation videos with the world and cause their higher reality. So don't miss the greatest chance of getting liberated by sharing, just by sharing and causing others reality. So with this, let's Close the session with the Purna Mantra. Let's thank Swamiji for the power manifestation and powerful cognition. Let's surrender all that to Bhagwan's lotus feet and request Bhagwan to make this as your reality, Paramashiva space as your existential reality. Again and again with the deep seeking and gratitude. Connect to Bhagavan in your third eye and let's end with the Purnamantra. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purna Purnamadashyate Purnasya Purnamataya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tatsat Sarvam Bhagavate Shri Nityanda Parmashyam Bhadukar Paramastu Om Nityanandam Thank you. Don't miss the Kailash Kotiyat sessions, which are ultimate and raising our consciousness to the super consciousness. So, see you all in the Kailash Kotiyat session, our manifestation session. Thank you, Nikendam.